Hello everyone, my name is Tabo and I will just be chatting to you about left anterior hemiblock. So my main focus of this talk will be on the ECG changes that one uh, can observe um, in a setting of left anterior hemiblock. So I just want to, to make you understand how those ECG changes come about. So I'm going to just um, talk about the four um, vectors that are involved in depolarization and then we'll also chat about the anatomy of the left bundle branch so so we've got the heart here with its four chambers and then the arrows in green represent the four vectors so as the impulse initiates in the sinus node we know that it spreads through both atria so it causes atrial depolarization and then the overall vector or uh, the overall direction of this impulse uh, forms this vector uh, vector one and next thing is um, septal depolarization so this always occurs from left to right because the septum is uh, primarily activated by the left posterior fascicle of the left bundle branch therefore this always happens from left to right so this forms our vector number two and then as the impulse continues to the Purkinje fibers and to the ventricles the overall direction of that impulse is towards the left ventricle and then uh, we get a vector um, uh, vector 3 the reason being that the left ventricle has thicker muscle than all the other chambers so the electrical impulse will always follow the chamber with uh, thicker muscle just as I would also buy thicker steak than thinner one, you see. And vector number four then represents ventricular repolarization. So that will be vector number four. And just to put it all together, vector one will then be represented on the ECG as a P wave because it's atrial depolarization. Vector two depending on whether it goes towards a lead or away so if it goes towards it will form a, a low amplitude r wave but if it's going away it will form a low uh, amplitude q wave and then vector three if it's going towards a lead will form a high amplitude r wave but if it's going away from a lead it will form a, a high amplitude s wave and then vector 4 will form a T wave. So now let us look at the anatomy of the, the left bundle branch. So this is our ventricle that has been dissected. So these are the papillary muscles. So now here's our left bundle. That's the anterior fascicle this is the posterior fascicle so we have blockage here by the anterior fascicle meaning that when the impulse comes down it doesn't get through there to depolarize this portion so we have a problem here now what happens is that as the impulse goes down the posterior fascicle eventually it's going to make its way to this area so that it activates it that's the amazing thing about the human body because it is always trying to survive so it's got all these compensatory mechanisms so that when something goes wrong we know that there's a plan b so what's going to happen is that the impulse will slowly move muscle fiber to muscle fiber until it reaches that region and then activates it 
so we have a shift of axis and remember we said ventricular depolarization is represented by vector number three so vector number three's axis will be shifted to the left which is why in patients with left anterior hemiblock you find that they have extreme left axis deviation but then of course we can tell how extreme it is if we knew if we know what their previous axis was so moving along now we put things into practice let us um, look at the different leads the limb leads let's look at we're going to start with lead one so this is lead one so we have HL depolarization, vector number one, and we have septal depolarization, vector number two. Remember, because the posterior physical is still intact, vector two is still normal. So take note that vector two is moving away from lead one. That's another thing you have to keep in mind that if an impulse is moving towards a lead you're going to get a positive deflection but if it's moving away from a lead you're going to get negative deflection therefore since vector 2 which is septal depolarization is moving away from lead 1 we are going to get so we have a p wave because of vector 1 and then vector 2 will give us a Q wave so it won't be this big it's just for you to be able to see it and then we know that um, vector 3 has been shifted right to this quadrant so vector 3 is in that direction therefore it's going towards lead one so we have a positive deflection therefore we're going to have an r wave in our t wave there so we're going to have high amplitude r wave a low amplitude q wave in lead one so these are the things you have to look for when you look at lead one low amplitude q wave high amplitude r wave this is funny and simple as well let's go to another lead let's take lead number um, three so let's look at the lead three so our lead three is here and so atrial depolarization is normal septal depolarization is normal and this is moving towards lead 3 so what do you think low amplitude q wave or a low amplitude r wave that's correct we will have a low amplitude r wave because this is moving towards this lead. so with septal activation we always have a low amplitude whether it's r wave or q wave it's going to be of low amplitude because the signal here is not that strong and then obviously we know that vector 3 has been shifted because of the block therefore it's moving away from lead 3 so a deep s wave so we'll see a deep s wave low amplitude r wave so that's lead three these are the things you have to look for simple isn't it let's look at another one let us take lead avl so i'm not going to do all the leads perhaps you can go on and practice so we have avl HL depolarization and 
septal depolarization and look at that vector 2 is moving away from AVL so what do we get that's it low amplitude Q wave and vector number 3 we know the axis has been shifted therefore it is going towards AVL therefore we have a high amplitude R wave so it's quite simple if you think of it so I won't go through all the leads so to put it all together for you in uh, lead 1 you are going to see a low amplitude Q wave and a high amplitude R wave in lead 2 you will have a small R wave but a deep S wave in lead 3 you are going to get a small R wave but a deep S wave so lead 2 and lead 3 you will get the same thing and then lead AVL you will have small Q wave but a, um, a high amplitude R wave and then in AVF what do you think you're going to have in AVF? because it's an inferior lead you'll get an R wave of, of low amplitude and then a deep S wave so that's basically what uh, what you're gonna get in left anterior hemi block um, you know I think the the thing here is to just grab the the four vectors you know and then if you know those you'll be able to to analyze the changes in the ECG in most uh, pathologies and I hope you have enjoyed my lecture and please feel free to leave your comments leave some questions there I'll be happy to answer and if you've got an additional information please post it as well so because I'm going to learn from you as well so grab all this knowledge and then we will uh, apply it on the next lecture on right and left bundle branch block thank you very much